we're just gonna go give it a fairly aggressive start but hello folks welcome to net cruiser cars today i'm just gonna go for a drive in my golf r and i wanted to talk to you about what i like about the digital dashboard now i'm gonna try a different composition than i've ever done before attached to the to the side window here and hopefully it's going to be able to pick up the screen if not i'll be able to boost it up in post where hopefully you can read what's going on there uh, with the screens now this is the mode that i'm typically in where the center gauge is my map the left gauge is rpm and in the center of the cluster i have average economy which this is a very high number when you first start the car it will drop down to around eight or seven as we get going but the outside ring is actually my throttle position and real-time economy so that's in a that's in a scale of 20 and you can see the little ticks in the display and what that's showing you is real-time economy so you can tell right now I'm using 9 liters per hundred kilometer right now but my average is 25 and that'll keep dropping and then on this side I have range till empty so on this side I have a very similar outside gauge with a number in the middle which is 140 kilometers till tank empty and then a full digital gas gauge of how much gas is in the tank. There is some repetitious information where the gauge on the bottom is also a gas gauge but this is the view that I like the most. Usually when I first start the car instead of having navigation I move over to, to driving data and my gauges will get bigger and I'll be able to have real-time oil temperature. So usually when I first start the car and when I first go for a drive like this, I stay out of the throttle. I try to not go above 4,000 RPM until I start to get an oil temp reading uh, because this will not show an actual temperature up until it gets around 50 degrees C. Different data that I can get in here, but overall I like having oil temp in my digital gauge cluster. You can get oil temp in the performance pages in the radio system, but I don't really use that page that much. I'm going to have to pass this car here. so. Because I don't have any oil temp yet, I'm just gonna do a very easy pass. Trying to keep my RPM low, but you can see that I did use 12 liters per 100K there in, in instant economy. And my instant economy is dropping. I'm hoping that we can see these, these gauges as we go. Overall, if you really like having a lot of information, this digital gauge cluster is excellent because you can get more information here than you ever can before. And you don't have to go this overboard with information. You could have it where it's just a drive indicator here uh, and, uh, and a speed indicator in the other one. You can make it as minimalistic as you want or as over the top as you want. So really, it's, it's great for almost all aspects other than you do lose some of that premium bespoke build quality of having a really nice analog gauge. Okay, so now in the center section, we've just got our first indication of oil temp. It says 54 degrees. And now that it's actually reading a temp, that will start to rise pretty quickly. So we're already at 56. Just gonna slow down here. I also really like having the paddles for uh, instant downshifts. I'm gonna go make a whole video about all the ways you can shift this car to, all the modes that there are for the transmission being drive, sport, and manual, uh, and all the different permutations to that, and how it affects when it changes gear and how aggressively it changes gear, because uh, there are some slight differences in that. starting to approach an oil temp now where I'd be okay to start putting my foot into it where it is a fairly cold day today so we're hovering around 77 78 degrees C it will warm up as I start to get more heat in the engine but as of right now we're just starting to get to that 80 plus degree temp where I'd be okay with actually starting to use all my RPM I've also still not done a real launch with this car yet. I also want to make a video about that of launching on winter tires versus how it's going to be launching on the summers when I put the summers on. So look forward to that. I am going to be making more Golf R content over the next few years probably as long as I own the car but I know it's been rolling out fairly slowly. I, ideally I would like to get one new car video out per week but I've been failing at that. 
because uh, I do want to keep my car subscribers interested in what I'm doing with this car and I do have quite a few plans for it I have things ordered things are gonna happen it's just gonna be a few months before I really get my act together and get them done Engine braking is also a very nice feature of just being able to drop down a real gear to slow yourself down without hitting the brakes. I'm sorry if this is a fairly boring static view of this dashboard, but because of the rules in my province of driving, where you're not allowed to basically touch anything, you're not allowed to have a, a electronic device in your hand, no cameras, no cell phones, and if you are caught doing that, it's a major fine. It's up to $1,000 now and three points on your license. So you do not want to get caught vlogging in your car, touching a camera, uh, or using your cell phone in the vehicle. It's, it's a very serious offense now. So I'm respecting the rules. I've got my camera mounted where I'm not touching it. I'm controlling it by voice. And uh, unfortunately, you're just going to get one static angle while I'm doing that. Until I start deploying multiple uh, cameras in the car, which I could do, and I probably will do on the more planned out shoots, uh, I'll start getting some multi-angles in the vehicle. I'm just going to switch over to map view, just in case that's very dark without the maps on. So just went into manual mode now. We're just gonna go give it a fairly aggressive start, but but that still was not a launch. So I was not pre-boosting. That was just half throttle launch off, off a stoplight. I do find myself shifting manually often in this car. I've, I've recently found that that's a bit more fun. You can easily leave it in D or you can go into sport mode, but having the manual shifting, I notice when you're, in, when you're over in manual mode, the shift response is a little bit crisper or it may even be noticeable because it holds your gears until you select a shift, unless you're approaching a red line scenario. So in the dashboard, the main views that you do have is you've got your nav view, you have a views menu where you can choose the views that you want to display inside each cluster, it's inside each gauge. You've got your audio controls. You have telephone controls. You have vehicle status, which shows you if there's any faults or if the start stop system's activated. You have a lap timer. There's driving data, which gives you things like coolant temp, oil temp, real-time economy. All the things that I used to have in my center cluster used to be economy related until I got digital dashboard where now I can have that stuff in my gauges. So now my gauges show me economy and fuel left and I, I'm able to put temps in my center, which I do like. And then we've got assist systems. And for assist, that's the uh, lane keep where it will show you the edges of the, the road indicating will it do the lane keep for you so the left side of the the right side of the road line just went away that means it's not active but i actually find this view is not very helpful because it's redundant information all of this information is available in the lower section where it's green or amber and if you turn on adaptive cruise control it also shows you the distance to the car ahead of you always in that lowest section so having it up here using all this room in the middle is kind of a waste and then we're back to navigation. A bit of an on-ramp pull here, so I'm just gonna go down a few gears. And we've got an on-ramp coming up. Still only 80, but something where we can get into it a little bit. If there wasn't traffic everywhere. So I might as well give you a little bit of a situation of what I do have planned for this car. So a couple things on my immediate uh, list, some things I have ordered, some things I'm planning, is uh, I do want to, first of all, get the car tinted. Before it starts getting too hot out in the next couple of months, I do want to get this car window tinted. 
I'm I'm leaning towards trying out a ceramic tint. I am curious if the uh, if the price increase is going to be worth it. It's almost twice as expensive. Um, although the pricing when I when I called around for it last week, the pricing of the normal carbon-based films have gone up by almost hundred dollars from when I had it done four years ago. There's now a kind of a mid-level ceramic and a high-level ceramic. I think I am going to try ceramic, luckily Expel. Then, in order to get better cracks and pops into the exhaust, which stock it's fine, it gets louder in race, but I do want to do the resonator delete, and that's just literally chopping off the secondary muffler uh, that's uh, that's before the main muffler, and then you can put in a straight pipe. And there's actually an Audi part for that. That's a direct bolt-on that I can order. It's around $300, which is a lot for just a straight piece of pipe, but. Uh, if you want OEM fitment and really nice clamps, they're around 300 bucks Canadian. I could probably get it cheaper if I go to some no-name muffler shop and ask them to just put in a straight pipe. So we'll see how it goes. But I do want it to be removable so I can go back fully stock if I need to. Uh, if, if I decide that there's too much drone or I don't like it. I think the resonator delete does add more cracks and pops on top of the farts that you get stock. I have ordered an extended uh, lip spoiler. And I do have that in my possession. I'm just waiting for the weather to get nice and decide when do I want to put it on. Um, it does mount onto the existing factory uh, spoiler and it just extends it a little bit. Uh, if you look at the Maxton designs, it's a very similar design to that and I think it's going to look very nice. And then it's getting into paint protection and coatings. So I did order uh, all of the equipment to do a full detail on this and, st and learn how to do Kind of professional style detailing with a dual action polisher so i did order a dual action high orbit polisher uh, a full set of uh, polishing a set of pads and uh, some nice snow foam soap and i also ordered the equipment to do a ceramic coating so i did order the c quartz uk 3.0 ceramic coating system and i will be trying that out the things that I'm kind of most known for when it comes to car stuff which is the VCDS tuning or uh, OBD11 tuning and I do want to do more things uh, I do want to configure the rear tail light so I get the double signal double brake light uh, where it uses the inner lenses where, where right now they do not they're just a static light I'm gonna change maybe I'm gonna look at changing some of the little uh, marker signals that are on or off there is an amber marker on the front headlights that are on all the time now and Initially, I did want to turn that off because I think it does kind of ruin the sleekness of the look of the front of the vehicle, but when your DRLs are on, when you take a shot of this car from the side, if those amber lights are off, you have no idea that the car is on and it's running. So it is functional, and I am thinking I might keep it because it's so highly functional. It's just three little LED clips, and I might decide to keep those on, but I do want to modify the rear tail lights. There's also something that I can do where I can permanently uh, open the exhaust flaps where instead of them being closed, there is a way for you to have them open all the time. Um, I don't know, we're gonna see about that. I think it is probably better just to leave that functionality and do the res delete instead of opening the valves uh, with a res delete. It might be very droney and very loud. And then there's some other tweaks I need to do, like the heated, heated seat retention did not work uh, when I went through the app-based uh, options in OBD11, so I am going to have to go in and code that manually. And uh, there's, a other, there's a few other things that I'm going to look into as, as coding manually, using uh, long coding, VCDS long coding, or OBD11 long coding. Also, something to note about OBD11 is there is uh, an iOS app and new device coming for OBD11. They have announced it. They announced it in early April, and they told me that they are gonna send me one for review. So look forward to that coming soon. Uh, people who own iOS, iPhone devices are finally gonna be able to have the ability to tune their Volkswagen Audi Group cars using OBD11 devices. But in order to do it, you are gonna have to buy a new device. So if you are currently, uh, if you currently own an OBD11 dongle, that will not work on iOS, Apple stuff. You will need to purchase a next gen OBD11 uh, to run on iOS. And then the other thing I wanna do with the car is slowly start doing some performance mods. Um, so right now the car is still fully stock and I still haven't even launched it really. Uh, 
to really feel what the stock power is like on full boost launches and uh, I have 5,200 kilometers on this car now. But I am gonna probably install my new speed power module box, which boosts the turbo by five PSI, which will give me approximately 30 to 50 more horsepower uh, over stock. So that would get it into the, into the 330 to 350 horsepower range just by doing that. And then I'm gonna decide, do I wanna keep that tuner box, which is just a bare bones, uh, kind of a, a under stage one level tune, or do I wanna buy a JB4? And the JB4 allows you to do a full map, a full custom map of your choosing. You can have stage one, stage two, or full custom, uh, and you can get a lot out of these motors. You could probably tune them up to 400 horsepower without having to do very many hardware additions. Um, it would be nice to have a downpipe. It would be nice to, to do a couple of things like an intake, but I don't think they're necessary to be knocking on 400 horsepower with this car. still stock. I'm going to detail and clean the paint, ceramic coat the paint. I want to ceramic coat the wheels before I install them. That's something else I want to do for sure. I want to clean and ceramic coat the Pretorias that I have before they get mounted on the car. And also before I mount them, I want to do some performance testing with my current winter wheels and tires, the 17 inches. I want to do some launches and, and see what the handling characteristics are like on full acceleration, full boost launches, and before I swap to the summers. And then uh, I want to do something to protect the leather. I want to do something to protect the carpets. I really just need to do my full detailing stuff. I've got plenty of chemicals on hand where, uh, where I want to be testing out some stuff I have, as well as I may order some new things. Um, there's something I recently just learned about, which is called the last coat. And apparently that is very similar to Beadmaker, uh, but the last coat also works on leather and they say it works on all surfaces. And it also seems to be like an SiO2 based ceramic spray on coating. Um, that's what's happened in the last six to eight months is a lot of these convenient based SiO2 sprays have come out where it's like, it's like you're getting a quarter of the longevity of a full ceramic coat. So I, I do want to test some of those. Uh, my current plan right now is to um, wash the car, clay the car, uh, do a very light polish or correction on the car on anywhere I see a scratch or a swirl, or I may do a full polish on the car. And then I would do a wash, a decontaminate, an iron X, uh, and then I would do my ceramic coat, uh, and then I would, on top of ceramic coat, I would do bead maker. That's my current plan of detailing for this car. Alrighty guys, so I'm just pulling up to the track. And uh, so hopefully that was interesting. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Just gonna go give it a fairly aggressive start but but that still was not a launch so I was not pre-boosting